We will call the seventh. Try that over. We'll call the seventh regular meeting of the Common Council to order. Sue, would you call the roll, please? Bauman? Here. Burr? Here. Bonet? Here. Serta? Here. Graf? Here. Manny? Here. Montemayor? Here. Perez? Here. Peterson? Here. Rinfleisch? Here. Sadali? Here. Stefan? Excuse. Van Akron? Here. Vanderweel? Here. Wangaman? Here. Warner? Here. Fifteen present. Quorum's present. Alderman Warner. Thank you, Your Honor. I move the minutes of the last Common Council meeting be approved, and that's the same standards entered on the record. It's been moved and seconded that the minutes of the previous Council meeting stand approved. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Alderman Wagaman, would you lead us in a Pledge of Allegiance, please? Okay, resignation, Steve. Uh, there's a letter dated June 22nd to the mayor from Richard Lundeen advising that uh, he's resigning his positions as a member of the Architectural Review Board and the Historic Preservation Commission. That can be accepted and placed down. No, that lies over, excuse me. Okay. And for appointments, uh, Hereby submit the following appointment for your consideration. Susan Richards to be appointed as city clerk to fill the unexpired term of Patricia Losey, whose term expires April 18, 2005, signed by the mayor. Alderman McGraw. Your Honor, um, normally I believe that would lie over. I could. But I would move that um, we suspend the rules and, um, and uh, confirm the um, nomination. I said. We have a motion before us in a second. Is there any objections to suspension? Hearing none, Alderman Graf. I thought I just said that, but I will say it again. You asked for a suspension, okay. <laughs> okay, then I would ask that, the, um, your, um, con um, that your appointment be confirmed. Excuse me. <laughs> we have a motion before us to confirm the appointment. We don't need a roll call, do we? Uh-oh. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Congratulations, Bill. Now we can get the sign made in front, Mike. Change it around. Steve, anything else? Okay. Hearings. We have one hearing this evening. And that's to rezone the property located at 915 North 7th Street. Is there any interested parties wishing to be heard on a hearing? Any interested parties out wishing to be heard on a hearing? Sir, please step up the microphone, give us your name and address. Good evening, my name is Jim Howers, H-O-U-W-E-R-S. Uh, I live at 28, uh, 2608 uh, Riverdale Avenue. And I am the chair of the trustees of St. Luke United Methodist Church. Uh, the property in question here is our old parsonage, which basically is vacated and has not been used for approximately 10 years. <clears throat> it's our hope that by uh, this rezoning, it will enable us to increase our ministry to the community and to our own congregation. The uh, request has been put forward uh, by an, the request by uh, Latinas Unitas, Unitas uh, for office space in the building. And uh, we found out we had to have a uh, commercial zoning for that. And with the property to the south and to the west is already zoned commercial. The property to the east and to the north is neighborhood office. 
and uh, we feel that the rezoning would fit very nicely into the city's uh, present scheme for the zoning. Thank you. Thank you very much. Anyone else wishing to be heard? Alderman Groff. Thank you, Your Honor. I'll move that the hearing be closed. Moved and seconded, the hearing be closed. Under discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Excuse me, Alderman Warner. Well, thank you, Your Honor. Could I pull forward document 746? Hang on, we got a public hearing first. Okay. Public. Or public forum, excuse me, okay. public forum. Then you can. Okay. Sue, public forum. My name is Adam Payne, P-A-Y-N-E, and I live at N5235 County Road S in Plymouth. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor Schramm and members of the council for the opportunity to briefly address you tonight. I'm here as well to talk about city county services, more importantly working together, and obviously the new police department, and I know you had some good discussion earlier this evening. I want to compliment Alderman Warner certainly for his leadership and passion for getting that police department going and certainly Mayor Schramm because I know it's a long term coming and I don't think it's a matter of if in this community, I think it's a matter of when and where. I wanted to briefly give a little background and perspective speaking on behalf of Chairman Bill Gehring who asked me to be here and could not be here this evening. He's attending a town meeting. Um, you have this evening a summary of activities on your desk as well as some correspondence from the county board as, as a whole. And very briefly, it was back in uh, June of this year, well, June 2015th of this year that the county board voted 25-6 to work with the city on this exchange and sale of property. But as was mentioned earlier, we've been working on this for over a year, negotiating for nearly a year. Uh, Mayor Schramm, Alderman Warner, Chief Kirk, and other city representatives, representatives I uh, got together for the past year to discuss this opportunity and in the timeline you'll see it was February 11th, 2003 when we initially received correspondence from Mayor Schramm asking to look at the possibility of selling or exchanging property. The, the city initiated it and we were pleased to follow up. In fact, you can see on March 18th of 03, the Transportation Committee, and you know how these things work, nothing happens quickly in government referred a resolution to the full county board and the full county board unanimously on April 15th said yes, let's work with the city representatives and negotiate some type of win-win or be beneficial agreement. And again, you have the summary before you. In May of 2003, we exchanged proposals and we've come a long way since then. In May, or late May of 2003, there was concern raised, and that was mentioned this evening by Alderman Warner, about the, the potential site contamination. And at that time, the city was granted approval to get out there and take as many borings as you wish, take a hard look at it. And when it was all said and done, it was discovered that, yes, there are challenges, but none that can be overcome. And in fact, our building services director, Jim Tabese, tells me that the property there probably is less challenging than what we're working with at UW Sheboygan with the additions that we have there. So it's not of such challenge that we can't overcome it. And in fact, the city resumed negotiations with us in October of 2003. Again, I'm not going to touch on all of these. They're in front of you. But as you can see, there was a great deal of time and energy and resources expended by members of the executive and transportation committees from the county board, staff, as well as, as the city, your building use committee, and many of the people in this room, and certainly Mayor Schramm, to work toward reaching a mutually beneficial agreement. You, needed a, you need a city police department. That's a good thing for this community. The county needs parking. Those of you who have been down at the, at the courthouse of late know that if we have all circuit courts in session, people struggle to find parking. So the city wanting to keep money as limited as possible to reduce the out-of-pocket expenses, we developed what I thought was a very favorable win-win solution. We would sell the county property for $162,000. We would replace the salt shed for $137,000, and the city would transfer ownership of the current parking lot that you have 
uh, in place currently that I don't think sees a lot of use, but it's close enough to the county that we could assign jurors or staff from our law enforcement or folks from that side of the courthouse block, if you will, to alleviate that concern. So that evening, frankly, for me, was, was a highlight because we all left that room feeling, I think, good that we had reached agreement after nearly a year of discussions and no negotiation. There was a lot of people involved. There was give and take on both sides. And again, it was a win-win. It wasn't just citing a new police department. It was looking at parking constraints for the county. And the county is everybody, city and other residents in the community. And as you can see on June 15th, as I mentioned earlier, the county board voted 25 to 6 in support of that agreement that was reached. That didn't come easy. Everyone in this room knows that dealings and negotiations in the past haven't always been fruitful. Yet we were able to pull people together and do something that I think is going to be in the benefit of the community as a whole, and that was reach that agreement. So what's happened since? Well, clearly on, on June 24th, myself and other county board supervisors were surprised to read. Your five minutes is up. May I have the opportunity? It's up to the Seven. council. All in favor of the extension? Aye. Opposed? Okay, continue, Adam. Thank you, and I'm sorry. sorry. I'm sorry, too. Okay. Um, we were surprised to learn that the Building Use Committee selected a different site. A surprise because of, again, the time we spent negotiating and working on what we thought was a win-win agreement. But not surprised to the extent that we don't recognize and appreciate and respect that that is the Building Use Committee's prerogative, and you as a council will be the final decision makers. But with that said, it was a surprise, and hopefully one that, again, we can continue discussions and move forward. Uh, what I'm hearing with the Sheridan Park is the bottom line with most people is cost. And I heard that raised today as much as perhaps a million dollars for this site. Are we talking short-term or long-term costs? Short-term, you've already heard what I raised for the, the cost of the property and the cost to rebuild the salt shed and exchanging the parking. But long-term, what are we going to miss in regards to missed opportunities? Again, I'll mention the parking. At one point, Sheboygan County had in its five-year plan building a two to $3 million parking ramp. I don't want to see us spend those kind of resources on parking, but it's serious, and as we all know, it's practical. You have to have parking. Well, if we were able to continue to go forward and obtain this site, that may put that off for some time, perhaps indefinitely, although I'll never say never, but for some time, if we have to build, if the county has to build a new parking ramp in the next five, 10 years, whenever the county board might decide to do so, that could be a three million plus cost. Well, what's a third of three million? Right there, boom, with just parking, we've spent more city taxpayer dollars than we have for this current arrangement. And that's to say nothing of all the missed opportunities to share space and resources for the benefit of all taxpayers. Both the city and county have need for evidence processing facilities, evidence storage, a vehicle impound, indoor shooting range, and training facilities. There may also be opportunities for joint dispatch, squad car maintenance, right next to the, the highway department and our sheds and people who currently work on vehicles, purchasing, information technology, and staffing efficiencies. In short, I think there are greater opportunities for sharing resources and future expansion at the North 23 third site. In fact, the alderman, the gentleman over here mentioned earlier, I thought quite eloquently, we don't want to box ourselves in. Well, Sheridan Park is 2.6 acres, and if you ever expand from there, you're looking at buying homes, what have you, and I think Alderman Warner or the mayor or someone mentioned how expensive that can be. At the county site, we have four acres, and next to that, we have our county facilities, our highway department. I don't think we're going to be there forever. I think at some point that's going to move out more centrally in the county, which again will open the door for future expansion, opportunity, opportunities, opportunities that probably no one in this room has thought of, no one on the county board has thought of, but I'm certain future mayors and older persons and county supervisors will, and I think we should provide them with that opportunity. So in closing, as Mayor Schramm has stated, we need to take a long-term view and position the community and taxpayers for success. Literally hundreds of thousands of dollars could be saved if we have the political will and the fortitude to work together. If I may speak frankly, in my humble experience, there's always so much rhetoric from everyone at all levels of government 
about the need to work together and to share services and become more cost efficient. Yet what I fail to see from my vantage point is a lot of strong leadership and the political will and fortitude to make that happen. We have that opportunity now and I'm, I'm hopeful that we'll continue to explore it. I hope everyone will ask more questions and leave the door open for further discussion. I know this has been a long process. I was going through a file this morning of information from the last three decades on when we missed the opportunity to work together at the current law enforcement center and studies that have been done as recent as this de decade on needs and opportunities. I encourage you to consider a needs assessment to determine both the city and county law enforcement needs so we may collectively strive to share space and resources where feasible, plan for the future, and achieve significant cost savings. I hope all of us, city and county officials, will lead by example, and thank you for the extended time. Mr. Mayor, I appreciate it. Thank, thank you, Adam. You. Okay. Um, next is Henry Bechtel. Henry, could you spell your last name and give me your home address, please? Yes, that's uh, Capitello, C-A-P-E-T-I-L-L-O. And my home address is 1619 North 38th Street. Thank you. The reason I'm here today is to, as a spokesman for the uh, Sheboygan Citizens Action Group. Uh, after reviewing your agenda for today, I, I noticed a lot of correspondence that was coming from the city clerk's office. Uh, I also looked at last agenda and you had correspondence coming from the city clerk's office. The reason I'm, I'm saying is because the Citizens Action Group had secured legal counsel uh, in regard to the direct legislation petition that was submitted into the clerk's office. This letter was dated on June 17th and it was sent to the city clerk's office. I don't know if any of the aldermen or older women here have received a copy of this letter. Basically, it's um, we're contesting the uh, some of the signatures that were disqualified. Uh, the attorney that has been secured by the Citizens Action Group has submitted uh, a packet to the city clerk's office with a request to a response. If we do not receive any response to the the uh, letter we will be filing with the State Elections Board. And I just wanted to come here and let you know that, so that, because I know at certain times they say, well, how do, nobody knew about this. Well, the letter was sent out. If you do not have it in your packets, you should ask for a copy of that letter. And as I said, if there is no response by July 21st, when the State Election Board meet, we will be forwarding this to their attention. Okay, the other thing, which doesn't have to do with this, but as long as uh, we had Mr. Payne from the, the county, um, and I was listening to his, his plea for the property that's over in, that's owned by the county, uh, I would say that if they really wanna help the city and really want the uh, police station to be built there, then I would, I would say that they should, if the bottom line is money, and we're looking that it's gonna be a million dollars less, then what they should do is they should offset those costs. In, and I know that uh, there was a request to pay additional money from the city for the parking. I would ask them to reevaluate what they're asking the city to pay and try to see if they can cut some of the, the, uh, the funds that they're asking for after reviewing the investment portfolio that the county has, um, I would say that they have quite a bit of money that they have in investments. Um, I'm pretty sure that they would not be missing that much. And I say that because if, the, if they're, they're making that much money on their investments, they could save the city some money also. Thank you very much okay. for your time. City. Hang on a minute, guys. City Attorney, I'd like you to address that letter that came in, please, and what action we need to take on that. Uh, I do believe a letter came into the clerk's office, and uh, I'm not sure. I, I've seen it, but I'm not sure where it stands. Uh, if, it's, if it's been submitted to the council, I'm not aware of that. I'm not sure where it's going to. You have that? 
Steve. It's sent to your office. Okay. I don't know if I was directed to do anything with it. I've, I've got it. Okay. And okay. If the council likes, I can submit it at the next council meeting. That's fine, but I mean, legally, that was a letter sent requesting Pat for Pat, and she isn't with us. I anymore. believe it was addressed to City Clerk. City Clerk Pat Losey, yeah. To, oh, uh, us? to have her reconsider her decision on the uh, the eligible uh, signatures on the petitions that were submitted. Okay. Alderman Warner. I think, uh, I guess, uh, Mr. Capitello spoke here several times, and I just caught he lives on North 38th Street. I was wondering, Mr. Capitello, are you a city resident? Are you no, speaking I'm for the SCAG group as a non city resident? No, uh, we have. Alderman Perez, he had I'm just wondering well, if that's. I'm sure. Because I, I first realized, excuse me, I, I, I never really caught his address before, and I was just right. wondering if he was in the city or not. Apparently not. That's just curious. Alderman Perez, you had something you want to say? Thank you, Your Honor. Um, it, it's happened before, and I quite frankly don't say anything about it. I think it's sometimes it's, it's even worthwhile for, for someone to, to address something, but I get the feeling that every time somebody comes here and addresses a council and say something they don't, the council or members of the council don't like, we want to strike back at them in some form or another. I don't, I don't know if that's our job. We're here to listen to the public. We don't respond. We don't address concerns. We don't ask, answer any questions. We simply listen. The agenda says public forum. It's their time, not ours. And I would really appreciate it. It's not just because of Mr. Capitello. Anybody that comes here and talks to us and tells us what they want to tell us, if they want to be in our face, it's not our job to stand up and address them in the form of intimidation. And I would appreciate if all the members of the council would take that serious. Alderman Perez, just in response to that, if someone comes up and gives us incorrect information, they're not going to come up here and give us incorrect information. When we have the correct information, we will respond to that. This is our council. I run this meeting. We will respond to it and give the correct information back. Now, whether they like it or not, they're going to get the correct information back, and we can disagree on that. May I? Go ahead. The information, Your Honor, can be given to the person that speaks before the council the following day. We do that with the school board, for example. They could do we the same thing. We don't engage does. in debate with, with, the, with the public forum. Well, we will address it if it's incorrect. We will not let it pass. Alderman Warner. I think in response to Alderman Perez, as I said, uh, Mr. Capitello has spoke here many times, and this is the first time right. I just thought North 38th Street, mm -hmm. is that in the city? And I feel it's important that people understand a person speaking for the SCAG group or Sheboygan Citizens Action Group, uh, you know, whether they're from the city or not. We had big arguments. I remember Mr. Capitello arguing up here against supporting uh, residents from outside the city to a committee that was investigating the mayor, which the SCAG group brought forward. I think it's relevant. It is relevant, and, and I'm not picking on Mr. Capitello. He can speak at any council meeting he comes to, but I do, I do think it does matter when the person is a city resident or not speaking on city issues that co clearly affect city residents. Yes, I would hope you're that active in the town board and the county board also. Alderman Montemayor. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. We've been through this before. Is there a rule, statute, anything to guide us about answering the public forum? Because I was of the under the impression that the public forum speaks, we're quiet, and that's the end of it. Am I wrong? Is there is there a, a statute, a resolution? No, no. A rule? Uh, we've got it in our code of ordinances that provides for a period on every regular council meeting for a public forum for people to speak. And that's it? There is nothing about answering? Uh, not really. I believe uh, Alderman Stefan had presented a document a number of months ago to try to put some ground rules to it, and that, was, that didn't go anywhere with the council. There is no rule. Thank you. Other than, other than speak for five minutes. So again, if there's something that's incorrect, we will try and correct it or we'll get the information to them. Alderman Serta. 
Thank you, Your Honor. I think it's important that it be said that I, I believe as the council members that we just became aware of this letter. I believe we'd be willing to address that, and I think we, we've we learned from the past how making certain mistakes, and I think we need to really address these issues so that they don't happen again, because I don't want that to be a poor reflect, uh, reflection upon the council or the mayor if we can work and make sure that those errors don't happen again. Thank you. Alderman Orner. I thank Your Honor, and, and I have no problem with someone who does not live in the city uh, speaking at the council. I think it's, it's a democracy, and they may do that, Correct. Uh, we do limit it to five people, I believe. But I do think that, uh, I don't know about the rest of the council, but I was under the impression Mr. Capitello lived in the city and was a city resident. And I believe that he represented himself as a city <coughs> resident. And besides that, we have had other people come from the town, like uh, one, if I remember, uh, a gentleman from the town of Wilson who clearly stated, I live in the town of Wilson. We've had people say, I'm from Sheboygan Falls, and we listen to them. And, and <coughs> excuse me, with the, I just feel it was misrepresented, and I thought that the council should know whether a person lives in the city or doesn't live in the city when they make those uh, comments. Thank so. you. Hold on, Press. Thank you. Just, just a point of clarification, Your Honor. I, what Alder, Alderman Warner's response, with all due respect, was not clarifying anything or clarifying something that was erroneous. You were asking a question without asking the chair to ask the question, and the manner that, that that, that relayed a message that said, you don't even live here, why are you talking to us? That I don't appreciate. I don't care if they're from Africa and they come here and address this council. They can come here and address this council until we change the rules. That I didn't take that way, but everyone has their own opinion, I guess. Alderman. Alderman Perez, I clearly did not say that. Alderman Warren, or Burke. Thank you, Your Honor. I think this is just getting a little bit out of hand here. So why don't we just, everybody cool their jets and get on with the rest of the council meeting for tonight. If you got something to discuss, let's talk it over after a while. Exactly. Okay, moving on. Consent agenda. Oh, Alderman Warner, did you want to pull something ahead? Is uh, resolution the gentleman from uh, St. Mark's talking? Which one? 746. On that, I make a motion the general ordinance be put upon We need passage. suspension, sir. Uh, I need suspension. On that, I move for suspension. Second. It's moved and second for suspension. Is there any objections? Hearing none? Okay. I make a motion the general ordinance be put upon its passage. Move to second the general ordinance be put upon its passage under discussion. <coughs> this is Alderman, excuse me, Don, Alderman Montemere. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I did circle this in my uh, agenda. Uh, where is it and what is it and why are we changing it? Steve? Just 746. Yeah. I don't have any of the specifics on uh, the, the merits of the rezoning. Steve? Yeah, I can address that. Thanks, Mayor. Mayor Council. Um, basically, what we're looking at is St. Luke's United Methodist Church, oh, okay. 915 North 7th Street. Uh, they have an old parsonage that they haven't used in a long time that I believe I'm not going to rehash what the applicant stated with regards to the use. The property is zoned urban residential right now. In order to use the property the way they want it, it needs to be zoned commercial. And the property um, is consistent with the area and is compatible with our comprehensive plan and staff would recommend approval of the rezoning. And if anyone has any questions, I'd be happy to answer. Thank you, Steve. Okay. Yes, thank Alderman you. Alderman Van Acker. Your Honor, this is a, uh, by Van Akron and Perez. We weren't asked to pull it uh, forward for everybody. Where does uh, came from Planning Commission? Ahead of us? I believe it came from Planning Commission. That's why. But you, you were to Alderman. That's your area. But it also says on this thing, Alderman Perez and Van Akron. But he can have it if he wants it. Okay, fine. I don't have a problem. I'm going to park the ordinance. I do. Okay. If Alderman Groff. Uh, I, my questions were answered. Thank you. Alderman Warner. I just want to say that any ordinance that comes out of Planning Commission always has all the person's names on it that are in there. And I think in this uh, instance, it was actually in front of the council before, so it came back with a change because the public hearing wasn't posted in time. So that's what happened. 
After another mm -hmm. discussion, would you call the roll, please? Bauman. Aye. Berg. Aye. Bonet. Aye. Serta. Aye. Graf. Aye. Manny. Aye. Montemayor. Aye. Perez. Aye. Peterson. Aye. Rinfleisch. Aye. Sigali. Aye. Van Akron. Aye. Vanderweel. Aye. Wangeman. Aye. Warner. 15 ayes. Motion carried. Okay, go back. Oh, there was one here. Hang on, Paulette had one. And I forget which one it was. Seven. Which one is it, Paulette? You sure? Six, 650. 650? 650. 658? Uh, we have a resolution by Alderman Stefan approving the terms and conditions of the ground lease at the Rede Redevelopment Authority land in South Pier District to Doyle's properties of Sheboygan LLC. Alderman Stefan is not here, so who would like to take this for Alderman Stefan? Alderman Warner. I am searching for it, Your Honor. But on 658, I would move that the resolution be put upon its passage. Second. Move the second resolution be put upon its passage under discussion. Alderman Montemayor. Me again. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Again, who, what, where, and when, why, where is it, and who, who Doyle's properties. If, Probably not if you wait a, No, if you wait a second, we're going to have someone explain that. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Uh, Paulette, there is a gentleman here to four, speak four, to five. us. Uh, could we have the floor open up, please? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We have a motion before us. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Sir? My name is John Smith. I represent uh, Doyle's Properties of she uh, Sheboygan LLC. And uh, uh, this Doyle's properties is, is basically my wife and I. We are uh, uh, interested in putting a, a restaurant in the uh, Blue Harbor development. Uh, we want to compliment the uh, council and the uh, economic development and the redevelopment authority and their vision in, in uh, uh, developing that property in the way that it, it has been developed. Uh, Doyle's uh, will be an Irish restaurant and pub. It will be a wholesome family restaurant uh, into the evening hours and then a great entertainment, entertainment venue to complement the Blue Harbor Resort. We intend to invest over $600,000 in the building and the assets and uh, employ 15 to 20 people with payroll over 425000 and uh, add to the uh, tax base in the community. And uh, I look forward to your approval of our, of our lease. Any questions, I'd be happy to answer. Anyone have any questions? Okay, if not, would you call the roll, please? Um, Berg. Aye. Bonet. Aye. Serta. Aye. Graf. Aye. Manny. Aye. Montemayor. Aye. Perez. Aye. Peterson. Aye. Rinfleisch. Aye. Sagali. Aye. Van Akron. Aye. Vanderweel. Aye. Wangaman. Aye. Warner. Aye. And Bellman. Aye. 15 ayes. Motion carried. Thank you for coming up. Okay, we go back to consent agenda. If no one has anything else you want to pull forward. Oh, hang on. Alderman Sigali. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I would like to pull out 7-12 for a clarification and discussion. Okay, let's, okay, it's oh. consent agenda, so let's get it on a thing and then we'll pull it out, okay? okay. We'll get a motion. Thank you. Alderman I'm Warner. Sorry. I thank your honor. I move that all our O's be accepted and placed on file, all our C's be accepted and adopted, and all resolutions, substitute resolutions and ordinances be passed. Second. Moved and seconded that all our O's be accepted and filed. Resolution be put upon their passage, ordinances, and substitute ordinances, you'd say? I didn't see any substitute, I just saw yes. ordinances. And our C's be accepted and adopted. That's 7 1 through 7 32. And you said 7 12? Yes. 7 12. Uh, okay, triple play sports again. Uh, Paulette, you want to fill us in on that one? Death resolution by Alderman Stefan consenting to the representation of Triple Play Sports Academy. I think that's actually Steve, Steve? Attorney Steve McLean can answer part of it, but the other part is Triple Play Sports Academy is a developer that the Redevelopment Authority is currently, I guess they're not negotiating yet, but they're listening to a proposal from them, and I think there may be some potential conflict and I'll let Steve speak to that 
uh, thank you. The city has uh, used the services of Davis and Keelthow uh, locally, uh, not uh, real recently, but uh, in some personnel matters. And uh, they're requesting a waiver of any potential conflict of interest where if they've represented the city in the past as to certain matters, and they're going to be representing, proposing to be representing Triple Play Sports Academy in negotiations with the city. They're asking us, they're telling us that, you know, there may be a potential conflict and, you know, to the extent there is any conflict, we want to get the city's consent to let them represent Triple Play Sports Academy in dealings with the city. That's... All right, Scott. Uh, what I would like to know really is what is the Triple Play Sports Academy Incorporated? What are they representing that they would like to go in potential contract with us concerning the South Pier District? That's what I, I don't know okay. what they are and what, and what they represent. And that's what I'm questioning is what they are representing. I think Paulette could probably best address that, but uh, yeah. They're still, they haven't begun negotiations yet with the Redevelopment Authority, and that initially would be in some type of a closed session discussion. And it's, it's just the same thing happened with Doyle's Properties LLC. They had the same attorney, and I think that attorney just wanted to make the city aware that, you know, they, are, they could potentially be working for the city at the same time that they're working for a developer. Okay, if you let me. It's not answering the question and asking them, what is the company and what do they represent that and what would they be bringing down to the South Pier? Now, this gentleman talked about his restaurant. So this company is called Triple Place Sports Academy Incorporated. What are they representing? Are they representing a sports bar? Are they representing something else that they want to bring into the area? Or, or do they represent whole bunches of things? Okay. Um, we're it's still really in the preliminary stages and closed session discussions. And so I don't really know how much I can say about what they're going to be doing or what they're proposing yet. All I would say is I think the, the, the name is pretty indicative of what they're looking to do. It's, a, it's, not, a, it's well, not a sports bar as far as I'm aware. It's, it's a, some sort of uh, recreation sports use. recreation uh, facility. If I may, I, th I believe it is exactly what you said. It is a recreational facility that um, would house several different things, possibly batting cages, um, a golf course this could is be what in I there. Was asking, and and um, I, I realize but sports is sports. At this point in time, I believe what Paulette is saying, they have not come forth with what they'd all put at that that place until they found out find out if they can use the same attorney that may represent the city. Okay. Alderman Van Thank you, Ms. Uh, thank you, Your Honor. Just for clarification, because they had said it was in closed session, call him and grab, just explain where he got the information from so people don't come to conclusions. Oh, all right, thank you. I know they have something in Madison similar to that, and that's all I'm, I'm just putting that all together saying, well, they have something like that in Madison that um, is, um, it's called a, a sports academy down there. And I'm just thinking, well, it might be the same as that. Okay. Alderman Sugali. One more thing. Since we're discussing the South Pier, um, I've had a couple people uh, calling me and they, they are asking what's being going to be also be built on South Pier. But they're requesting a copy of a DNR report that was put forth about the South Pier. And I was wondering if the council has a, report, a DNR report on the South Pier and if it was being able to further be developed in that. The constituents that are calling me say there is. I'm not aware of one. I said I would take it to council and find out if there is one that the council could review. Paulette, you, you want to speak on that issue or Steve? Uh, I can address that. It's not really germane to this issue, but uh, we do have an approved DNR remedial action plan for the development of the, the remediation of the South Pier. And part of the uh, remediation is the development. Uh, 
we're required to either put in uh, two foot of fill, which we've done on the anticipated on most of the site, or cap the site with uh, parking lots or buildings, things of that sort. So, yes, there is an approved remedial action plan. It's I think in two volumes. I, I believe I've got a copy in my office. I believe the planning department has a copy in their office. The DNR, I'm sure, has copies if someone is interested in getting a copy from the DNR, but yes. Okay. Alderman Warner. Uh, I was just thinking of something, uh, and maybe Steve can clarify this. Uh, if a person out there wants some information and all the person tells them where to get it, that is fine. But can an all the person go in there and demand say a copy of an entire report and then give it to a, a third party when the general public has to come in and pay for the So I, I'm just saying I just thought of this ethics situation we had a discussion on back a while ago and I seem to remember that that's not good so just in hearing Alderman Segali's thing about some people wanting some information I think you can give general information but I don't know if you can go in and get reports and because you could be doing this for different groups and things like that, and I think that might be an issue. So, Steve, am I right or wrong? Well, I guess from an open record standpoint, uh, somebody comes in and makes a request for a copy of a record, and we're the custodian of the record, we can provide it, and we charge 25 cents a page. That's our, our standard rate. The police department charges a little bit differently because they generally mail things out. I think they charge a dollar for the first page and uh, cover okay. mail, mailing and... Uh, and in that case, then, I guess what I'm asking is, can an older person come in and get that information for free because of virtue of their office and then give that information to somebody else, to a third party? That's really not fair to the general well, public. Well, can they? I think the answer is yes, they can. You know, uh, is it the best way to go? I don't think so. I think if uh, someone wants a copy, they can. There's, there's a mechanism for doing that. In tight budget times, uh, I know our office, we've been more conscious of charging the 25 cents a page because uh, uh, it helps out on the budget. It's every time you're running copies, there's a cost to doing that. Okay. I would hope no alderman would do that, alderman lawyer. But we'll watch. Okay. As we move on, anything else from 7-1 through 7-32? Alderman Montemayor. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. 721. Okay. This is probably a small problem, but perhaps not to the person who own, owns the ice cream truck. <laughs> if I read this correctly, there can be no music on ice cream trucks. That's what they're basically asking, that the noise is irritating as they go down the street and keep playing the same tune over and over. And it says audio systems on ice cream trucks are illegal. That's what this says right here. Okay. Is that correct? That's what it says. I, I don't know if that's the case or not. I love those little songs coming down the street. That's the only way I know they're on their way. Alderman Vanderwell. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, currently, well, first this was to file the documents. We weren't taking no actions. But currently, it is already a... Uh, an ordinance that in residential areas you cannot have ice cream trucks playing music. If someone's working third shift, drives them crazy, if someone's taking a nap, that's just the way the ordinance is set up. So, uh, but we were not taking any action, we were filing a document. So thank you. I think we have to change that. <laughs> Alderman Warner. I would just say that uh, I have the public protection and safety minutes in. This came about in our committee because of a complaint from a citizen Carmen Devine, I believe, on the south side, who had a problem with his uh, ice cream truck playing music really loud and constantly, and it is on our books that it is not allowed. So, and the reason is, is for the obvious reasons that Alderman Vander really mentioned. They can uh, ring bells, I think, to some degree, but <coughs> in anything that conflicts with the city's noise ordinance, it could be a problem, right? And there's a lot of people out there who don't want to hear the ice cream truck. It makes kids run right into the street when they hear it. Myself, it doesn't bother me either way, but that's just the ordinance as it is at this time. So we're filing the communication, telling them they can call the police department, right? <laughs> so. Okay, we have another discussion. Everything 7-1 through 7-32, would you call the roll, please? <clears throat> sure. 
Bonet? Aye. Serta? Aye. Graf? Aye. Manny? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Perez? Aye. Peterson? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. Sigali? Van Akron? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Wangaman? Aye. Warner? Aye. Bauman? Aye. And Burke? Aye. 15 ayes. Motion carried. 733 to be referred. 734 through 740 to be referred. 741 will lie over. 742 will lie over. 743 and 44. No, excuse me, 743 to be referred. 744 by finance, recommending filing documents, submitting a communication from Sergeant Tarkowski requesting a turnaround, requesting two turnarounds on South 20. State Highway 23, Kohler Memorial Drive. Alderman Warner? I believe that's yours. Uh, finance. Alderman Graf. Oh, excuse me, Alderman Graf, I'm sorry. Your Honor, I move that the RC be accepted and adopted and the documents be placed on file. Sorry. Move to second that the RC be accepted and adopted and the documents be placed on file. Alderman Warner. I think, I guess I would just like if Alderman Graf, uh, if they, their committee had talked to the county at all about working on this in finance. I've called you that. Yeah. Right. And no, we did not because um, at the time of our meeting, it was um, um, Tom Holton supposedly had funds and found some funds that were available and he was going to do something with this. So um, we just filed this document figuring that something would come through Public Works. Okay. Okay. If there's no other discussion, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Seven forty-five to be referred. Seven forty-six. We already did. We already did. Yep. Can we just take a couple minute break, please? I've got to get a drink of water. All right. Let's break for about two minutes, and then we'll be back. Thank you. This water is warm. I get good. Thank you, Council. Pa uh, Pat. I'm sorry. Pat. Old I'm habits. sorry. Pat I knew I was going to make that mistake. <laughs> Sue, would you please call the roll? Oh, yes. Um, Graf. Here. Manny. Montemayor, Here. Perez, Here. Peterson, Here. Rinfleisch, Here. Sigali, Here. Van Akron, Vanderweel, Here. Wangaman, Here. Warner, Here. Bauman, Here. Berg, Here. Bonet, Here. Serta. Here. 15 present. Forms present. I understand that we're missing some documents in the packet. Follow along, please. If you need <laughs> copies, we will get them to you. I do apologize. Questions. If there's questions, please raise them as we go along. Uh, go ahead, Steve. Uh, discussion with the, with the city clerk <laughs> uh, during the break. Clarify on ice cream trucks. Uh, they're not illegal per se. There's a distance requirement. You can't uh, have the sound go more than 100 feet, I think, from the, from the right. radius of the truck. Uh, I think that makes more sense to me. That's more consistent with uh, requirement on all sorts of things that there's a, you know, it's basically too loud for the circumstances, but there's not any ordinance that prohibits uh, music on ice cream trucks. Okay. <laughs> all right. Not that I know of. Anyway. <laughs> 659, we have a resolution by Alderman Stephan. 50, 50. 658. Yep. We already did that. Oh, we did? Yes, we did. Sorry. Oh, excuse me. Okay, so. Sorry, Jill. 659, resolution by Alderman Stephan, Berg, Manny, and Monty Mayor, transferring transfer of appropriations in the 2004 budget. Alderman Groff. Thank you, Your Honor. I move that the resolution be put upon its passage. Move. We have a motion before us in a second under discussion, sir. 
I just, I don't have exactly what this transfer all involves, but if Sue would read it, um, I, there's probably two or three items on there. Yes, there are two, two no, there are actually more. Um, oh. Establishing estimated revenue and appropriation for donation received for the community policing expense, and establishing estimated revenue and appropriation for donations received for the sculpture transportation and placement. Establishing appropriations for funds to cover deductible for insurance claims for vandalism in the Parks Department and damage from a lightning strike. And establishing estimated revenue and appropriations for donation for Maywood. Okay. Anyone have any? Okay. There's no discussion. Would you call the roll, please? Montemayor? Aye. Perez? Aye. Peterson? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. Sagali? Van Akron? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Wangaman? Aye. Warner? Aye. Bauman? Aye. Berg? Aye. Bonet? Aye. Serta? Aye. Graf? Aye. And Manny? Aye. 15 ayes. Motion carried. 625, it's an RC by Special Committee on Risk Management recommending filing documents submitting a claim from Ryan Lehman for alleged damages to his basement when his drains backed up in paying the claim of amount of 167.50. Alderman Groff. Thank you, Your Honor. That RC, along with 626, the, that RC, which recommends filing documents submitting a claim from Charter Communications for alleged damages to one of their vehicles when it was hit by a snowplow, as that claim has been paid. Um, and 624, um, recommending filing the document submitting a claim from Matthew Guzzo for alleged damages to his vehicle when it was backed into by a police car and paying his claim in the amount of 9025. I would move that um, 625 that that, be, that RC be accepted and adopted and the claim be paid, 626 that that claim be filed as it was already paid, and 624 that the um, that claim um, be filed because that claim was already paid. Okay, and which one? Hold on, hold on. You want that separately? Okay, we'll do 625 first. <coughs> There's no other. Alderman Bowen. Uh, thank you, Your Honor. Uh, the question that I've got basically is what makes this claim payable compared to most of the other sewer backup claims that we usually deny? Michael? I can answer that, Alderman Bowman. Uh, the claim was not for damages, uh, this claim was for. Uh, uh, for plumbers costs what our policy has been uh, if a problem is found in the city main uh, people some people might call a plumber right away some people might call our sewer crew if they call a, uh, a plumber and he finds that there is a problem in the city main we will pay for that plumbers costs but it will not pay for the damages Okay, so in other words, we're not setting a precedent. We've done this in the past. We've been doing this. This has been our our policy uh, ever since we went self-insured in 1989. Okay. Good. Okay. Would you call the roll on 620, or does it doesn't matter? No, we take them all together. We take them all together. 625, 626, and 624. <clears throat> Perez. Aye. Peterson. Aye. Rinfleisch. Aye. Sagali. Van Akron? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Wangaman? Aye. Warner? Aye. Bauman? Aye. Berg? Aye. Bonet? Aye. Serta? Aye. Graf? Aye. Manny? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. 15 ayes. Motion carried. 747 goes to Plan Commission. 748, building use. 749 can be accepted and placed on file. Alderman Graf. Rather than accepting place that on file, um, that communication has a lot of information as well as these. I was going to ask that that all be referred to the plan commission. So That's fine. They have copies of that rather than um, than not know about it. Okay. We have a motion before us and a second to refer it to plan commission. Under discussion. Hearing none. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed. Motion carried. Seven fifty. Steve. Hang on, I may have that yet. Yeah, yeah. I do. Excuse me. 750, and that will go to City Planning Commission. Okay. 751. 751 is an RO by the Deputy City Clerk submitting a notice from 
Public Service Commission of Wisconsin regarding application of Alliant Energy Resources Inc. for approval to purchase, own, and operate the existing natural fire gas, excuse me, natural gas fired merchant power plant located in Sheboygan Falls. That could be accepted and placed on file. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. 752 is a communication, excuse me, an RO by the finance director treasurer submitting the Harbor Center Marina balance sheet from operations dated May 31, 2004, as submitted by Skipper Marine. Special committee and special marina committee. 753 is a communication from Mary Dots, 1018 Los Angeles Avenue, regarding concerns with standing water in the alley near her home from a sump pump drainage pipe and a vehicle that is being stored in that alley. Public protection and public works. 754 is an RO by the Deputy City Clerk submitting communication from Richard Susha, former mayor of Sheboygan, complimenting, complimenting Mike Hutz on his outstanding service to the city, wishing him the best in his future retirement. That can be accepted and filed. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. 755 is an RO by the mayor submitting a recommendation for the 2005 budget process for the general fund that would use the 2004 original budget as a base that is adjusted across the board by the net increase or decrease in the total general revenue, that will general go to fund revenues. Okay, that will go to strategic. And 756 resolution to request the mayor to submit the 2005 budget recommendation that maintains the general fund departmental budgets at the same level of appropriations as the 2004 budget as approved on November 24, 2003. That will go to strategic. Hey, hang on guys, just a moment before you go, I got two articles here I got from Ed Surik today and I think they're well worth, well worth showing. This is the HR magazine, the businesses of, business of people and one, it goes to, sh yeah, it goes to show. It goes to show one of the larger, number one, small company, the United States, correct me if I'm wrong, Ed, if you're still here, you might have left. And it shows Johnsonville Sausage in a magazine. It's a great, great honor for them. And then if you turn the page, it got a toast, a successful culture, and this is a f number one medium company and acuity insurance. So very proud of these two companies doing very well in our community. I'm sorry, go ahead Alderman Groff. Yeah, I just want to say on 756, that document that, that was presented regarding um, the 2005 budget recommendation. Yes. Just so that all the aldermen are aware of this, if the budget comes in at the 2004 appropriations as it has been, we are already at a 4% increase approximately. Mm -hmm. If we do not get any additional funds from the state or come up with additional revenues of some type, if nothing else changes and they come in with those figures, we're looking at a 4% tax increase. And I just want to make sure everybody's aware of that. Correct. And, that and that's be basically because of the concessions that were, were granted last year and um, now um, I'll come due at the end of um, this year. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye.